This is a 2021 Mercedes Maybach GLS 600 4 Matic. It's opulence on wheels, mobile luxury taken to its zenith. It epitomizes your preference to maximize the comforts life has to offer and that you see no point in compromise. It's also technically hybrid, so there's that. My name is Robin Warner, an experienced engineer and magazine editor, and I'm going to show you the car in detail, inside and out, as well as take it for a drive through a variety of roads to show you how it works. Let's go. The Maybach GLS is the top of the line GLS model you can buy, from a starting price point at least, standing well above the 450, 580, and indeed the AMG 63 models. After all, it stands on standard 22-inch wheels and has a champagne fridge on the options list. Powering the Maybach GLS 600 is a twin-turbocharged 4-liter V8 that produces a peak 550 horsepower and 538 pound-feet of torque. That power then goes through a 9-speed automatic transmission and onto all four wheels. The base price for a 2021 Mercedes Maybach GLS 600 4-matic is $161,550 and my test car costs $163,450. For those that are interested, I included detailed specifications including dimensions, fuel economy, and options in the description. All right, let's take a look around the car. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is a very, very big SUV from Mercedes. It is the Mercedes Maybach GLS 600 for Matic, and it has presence, it has stature, and it has a whole lot of stuff, and it better considering its price, right? This particular one is painted in brilliant blue metallic, and yeah, it's pretty darn brilliant if you ask me. Looking at the front, it's pretty clear that subtlety is not the Maybox thing. Just take in all that chrome okay you've got a chrome front grill right here and it says maybach embossed into it you've got these chrome lower bits of the grill as well with chrome trim around it you have this chrome lower bit right here and you have the proper tristar logo mounted on the hood this is not flush with the hood this extends out of it like the good old days you could say like hood ornaments of yore when you step back from the car far enough you can see it in profile and from here you can see that it has yet even more chrome and it also has the classic two box shape but it is a very stately elegant version of that one of the things that's pretty hard to miss are the standard 22 inch wheels and if that's not enough for you, Mercedes offers an optional 23 inch wheel, and that is a forged wheel if you go that route. I really like the way that Mercedes incorporated chrome into the window trim right here and chrome into the B pillar as well, where you can see my reflection easily enough. Hello. I also, you got these chrome roof rails going back right here, which takes you to the D pillar and this double M logo right here that stands for Mercedes Maybach. Finally, one little note about the side view mirrors. Down below, you can see there's a little light right there. That illuminates the Mercedes Maybach logo onto the ground. Can't really see it here and I don't have the car open anyway, but I open it up in the garage. I can show you that right now. From the back, the presence continues. There are more chrome elements. You've got this nice chrome Maybach right here and this chrome strip that runs along just beneath the TriStar logo and the GLS 600 logo right here. You've got a little bit of chrome on the step here of just below the lift gate. And of course, chrome for the exhaust tips as well. And now these aren't the real exhaust tips right here, but the real exhaust is not far behind. It's hanging out down there. And if you want to get technical, I suppose that means those are quad exhaust tips. Anyway, there's a lot to show you inside. When you open the door, you get this big running board that automatically rolls out. And as you can see, it has seen some weather. But not only does this running board extend out and make it easy to get in, but it actually gets wider for the second row passengers right there. And of course, there's another Mercedes Maybach logo 
The black leather you see on the door is in fact standard equipment as is this 27 speaker Burmeister sound system that's attached. And of course, there's also the usual bits right here. Obviously, power windows, power side view mirror adjustment, power locks, door handle. There's your lift gate opener down there. You get three position seat memory and a lot of ways to adjust the seat. You also have standard heated and ventilated seats. And if you look a little bit closer, you'll notice that, see these dots on the windows right there? Those are window shades on the second row not just window up and down. More chrome for the Maybach labeled kick plate. And right here, you've got this like shag carpeting plushness in the floor mats. Looking up here, you have pretty usual things right here, electric parking brake, different adjustments for the lights. You have tilt and telescoping steering wheel, of course. You also have a heated steering wheel, and all of that is also standard. And while much of this interior is in fact standard, you might have seen it on the door, but also right here, that is a black flamed natural grain ash wood. And that is an additional $850, but it looks really, really good. At first glance, there's probably nothing too terribly special looking about these seats, but these seats have a lot of ways to adjust and a lot of air bladders built into it because they are also massaging. And I'll show you more of that in just a moment. You are looking at two 12.3 inch screens attached together to give you one long continuous piece of glass that makes up the instrument cluster and the center console touchscreen. Both of these things have tons and tons of options in them. Looking back, you can see the steering wheel has a lot of adjustments over here and over here. This largely adjusts the instrument cluster and this adjusts the center console touchscreen. Obviously, I also have cruise control options right here and the usual media volume adjustments right there. But you see this tab right here? This is like a little remote control trackpad type of thing. With this, I can adjust a lot of things right on the instrument cluster. I'll start just by scrolling. And you can see I can scroll down to get different displays of what I want to look at. A lot of different options right here trip is just the beginning but I can also scroll it horizontally to the speedometer and if I start scrolling down here you can see that I can choose a clock trip information route schedule music and the cars attitude both fore aft and side to side how cool is that I can also adjust the tachometer and of course up there is a big heads up display Moving to the center console touchscreen, I will just go ahead and use the touchscreen, but I could also use the trackpad route down here, or I can use this trackpad right here. Okay, obviously you have a lot of different options to choose here, but I wanted to focus on a couple things. First one is comfort. So not only do these have heated and ventilated seats, of course they're massaging, and there's lots of different options of what those massages can be. You can also do a ton of adjustments with seat comfort right there. You have all kinds of different options you can adjust with the ambient lighting and you can see the lighting runs across here like that and up to the panoramic moonroof as well. You also have energizing comfort and energizing coach and that's something that's very similar to the Mercedes S-Class and I actually did a whole separate video that highlighted some of those things and I'll put a link to that right now. I also wanna show you info. Mercedes offers you tons of information about what this car is doing, vehicle, engine, consumption, and then obviously access to the owner's manual. But then there's also settings. And here is where you can choose a ton of different options, whether you want the head-up display up, different assist systems, those types of things, and you have more detail when you go there. But if you go to vehicle, this is dynamic select. Here's how you adjust the individual setting for the drive modes. Because yes, of course you have several drive modes in this. And if I click on this, you can see that I can adjust the drive, the suspension, the steering, and the stability control. And it's almost always between comfort and sport. Then there's also this thing called curve. And I currently have it set to the highest setting. This uses the air suspension to counteract what would be the natural lean of the car. It's kind of incredible. I'm very excited to check that out. 
Okay, moving on from the instrument cluster, of course, we've got four zone climate control and we've got more of this beautiful wood here, more of these controls here, different ways to make some adjustments to the stability control and the suspension and those types of things. If you lift this up, here are your cup holders. The cup holders are also heated or cooled. So if I press this button once, those are now cooling cup holders. Press it again, those are now heated cup holders or I can turn it off. And this is a smartphone wireless charging pad right there. Looking up, there is your panoramic moonroof right there. And if I click this, there goes the privacy panel. And as you can see, it goes and goes and goes. There's a lot of glass on this roof. There it is. And of course, you've got a usual plethora of buttons up here, plenty of adjustments to make. Drive modes, adjusted with this dynamic button right here. You have six drive modes. Individual, Sport, Comfort, Maybach, Curve, and Off-Road. And you can see what is adjusted is shown right there. And that is that curve thing I was showing you. This Maybach mode is something special. Comfort's pretty obvious, Sport's pretty obvious, Individual is pretty obvious. All right, it's probably pretty clear that I could go on to another hour talking about just the interior of this thing because it is that incredible in here. But all this different technology makes me quite curious to see what this thing's like to drive. Let's go for a drive. Hi, everybody. Yeah, very happy to be driving this 2021 Mercedes Maybach GLS 600 for Matic. I mean, how can you not be comfortable when you're getting a seat massage <laughs> while you're telling people about a car? And quickly, I do wanna say that yes, this is a 2021 and I am recording this in 2022, but there will be a 2022 version of this car and not much is changing between the two model years. With that said, I wanna start with a fun fact. Did you know that this car is much, much bigger than the Kia Telluride that I recently test drove. In most every dimension, it is noticeably bigger. In fact, I'll put them up on the screen right there for you to see. But depending on which trim you get of the Kia Telluride and this, this seats half as many people as, as that one. After all, this version is a four seater and the Kia Telluride can seat up to eight people. So I just find that funny and I wanted to share. And truthfully, if we're totally honest, this isn't really a four-seater. It's really a two-seater, maybe a three-seater, but I'll get to more of that in a minute. As I said at the top of the video, this is the top version of GLS you can buy, but it is not the highest amount of horsepower you can get. Even though three of the four GLS models come with a version of the twin turbocharged four liter V8, the AMG 63 gets a healthy bit more horsepower. You do get a healthy chunk more than the GLS 580, which manages with just 483 horsepower, but you are more than 50 horsepower down from the AMG 63, which gives you 603 horsepower and even more torque. Just an impressive, impressive motor in all regards in the AMG. But I think that you'll find that 550 is plenty adequate. <laughs> but speaking of the V8, this is configured to be a hot inside V, which means the exhaust exits in the valley of the V and the intake comes in on the outside. And what that does is allow the turbos to get hot exhaust gases very quickly and also very quickly heat up the catalytic converters, which is very important for emissions. Under light loading conditions, these V8s do have cylinder shutdown to improve fuel economy and like I said, this is a hybrid. It is a 48 volt system that Mercedes calls EQ Boost, which means at low RPMs, it can provide up to 21 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque in additional bursts to help you have better mid range power. Obviously, it's also good for um, auto stop start and those types of things to improve fuel economy. And by the way, every single version of GLS gets that EQ Boost system, including the AMG model. So every GLS is a hybrid. As I said at the top as well, you do get a nine speed automatic transmission, which gives you a nice wide ratio range to use. And the transfer case to make this an all wheel drive SUV can give 100% of the torque to the front axle or to the rear axle. So it has complete control of where it sends torque, which is pretty cool. 
Now, despite being a hybrid, this also is not the most efficient GLS you can get. That title belongs to the 450, which is the one and only inline six powered version of this truck. And that gets 20 miles to the gallon in the city, 24 miles to the gallon on the highway, 21 combined. And that compares pretty darn favorably to this 15 miles to the gallon in the city, 19 miles to the gallon on the highway, 16 combined. But again, that's not the worst either. The AMG is actually a little bit more thirsty than this. But when you're in this price category, fuel economy probably isn't your top concern and <laughs> acceleration might be a little bit higher on the list. But there's good news in that regard. I really wanted to see how well this thing could accelerate despite weighing more than three tons. So let me show you that now. All right, time to see how well this GLS 600 can accelerate. 600 does not mean six liters. 600 just means a lot of power. And we've got 550 horsepower from this twin turbocharged V8. I've come to a complete stop, put on some brake torque. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh nice. Wow, fast shifts. God, look at that. Those are fast shifts. And we are hustling. Look at us go. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Three tons. This thing weighs three tons. And yet we accelerated that well. That's impressive. And I have to say, I was actually pretty surprised with how aggressive those shifts were. They really snapped into the next gear. So it wasn't this like abundance of smoothness. Mercedes claims zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. This weighs more than three tons and you can get zero to 60 in under five seconds. Just insane. But this thing is so much more than a fast in a straight line luxury barge. This thing has a double wishbone front suspension, a multi-link rear suspension, air springs with adjustable ride heights and adaptive shocks and a 48 volt system called E-Active Body Control. And that is incredible. I just can't believe what modern technology is allowing vehicle dynamics engineers to do. This thing has, among its six driving modes, has something called curve control, where it will actually proactively push the car in the opposite direction that a vehicle typically rolls into a corner, and you actually lean into a corner like a motorcycle. This is a very big, heavy vehicle with a high center of gravity, a long wheelbase, and all the things that just fundamentally work against a car when it comes to good handling. And it leans into a corner like a motorcycle if you want it to. And you have to see just how incredible this really is. Let me show you that right now. All right, everybody, time for the handling test. I've currently got the GLS in sport driving mode, and this is a big, big SUV. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. power obviously yeah not much grip that's not a surprise <laughs> but you know pretty darn good body control there yeah not a lot of grip not a lot of grip but I am I am seriously impressed with how well the body is controlled the body is not leaning over much we're not getting that much pitch we're not getting that much dive Credit to this air suspension and really good damping control as well. Man, yeah, so I'm actually pretty darn impressed considering that the tire that this car has on it and just the sheer size of it, center of gravity can't be that low. Yeah, that's really good body control. And we're actually not done. I said I wasn't done because I actually have to go through that same few corners again because now I'm in curve mode. Wow, what the world? So there's still not much grip, but the body doesn't roll at all. That's spooky almost. Wow, yeah, you can feel, you can feel the force counteracting the natural motions of the car. That's incredible. This is a three ton SUV and I've got, the car is leaning into the corner. That's. That's amazing. So this air suspension has enough power that it can actually counterbalance the entire lean of the car 
and lean the opposite direction a little bit even. This is the most aggressive of the three settings for the curved driving mode. Wow. All right, I've got to go the other way, see how that feels. Wow. Oh, man. So you still have lots of understeer, but you have zero body roll, and you can feel the forces on the car. It's incredible. Wow. Okay, well, that's just impressive. That is just a showcase of what modern technology can really do. I am properly impressed. I hope you can tell that this is genuine surprise. I've never experienced sensations like that in a car where you know all the weight is going one direction, but the forces from the active suspension are pushing the other direction. This is a super long wheelbase, super heavy front end car. It's gonna understeer. You're not gonna have a lot of grip, but just the amount of control on the body is incredible. Air suspension, adaptive shock absorbers, 48 volt system, very, very powerful combination. Very, very impressed. Alas, all of that might be kind of pointless because this thing is a luxury barge. And one of the better ways to see that is to show you what it's like to drive on the interstate. Let me show you that right now. All right, everybody, time for a drive on the interstate. I'm now in the comfort driving mode. Oh, and we've got plenty of lean in the car now. <laughs> Getting onto the freeway. Of course, this car has adaptive cruise control and a ton of other assist systems. But the key to this car isn't that stuff because a lot of cars have that stuff and it works really well. The key to this car is just how incredibly quiet and comfortable it is. We're up to speed, we're moving with traffic, if not a little bit faster, and it is so very quiet in here. Got virtually zero road noise. You know that tires are on the car, but man, that is, <laughs> you're not hearing much of anything. And then even wind noise is extremely well isolated here. Out of curiosity, I turned on all the driving assistance stuff, so I'm going around a subtle curve right now. My hands are off the wheel. Yeah, and it is following the curve, and it's doing a pretty good job of keeping me centered in the lane as well. Yeah, that's, that's above average in terms of lane centering. So, yep, we're following the curve, and we're staying centered in the lane. And my hands have been off the wheel for several seconds now, and there have been no complaints to put my hands back on the wheel. So I'll just wave to you guys as we continue to follow this curve. Now it's getting a little upset. It suspended my cruise control. I'll go ahead and turn it back on. But again, that's ancillary. That is not the primary thing here. What's so important about this is that these seats are supremely comfortable. I'm not even getting a massage right now, but I'm extremely comfortable in these seats. It is very, very quiet in here, and uh, I'm just really enjoying this ride. Oh man, this would be a very comfortable, very impressive interstate cruiser, no doubt. And of course, I should say that this has a ton of safety equipment and all the stuff. I can put a list of some of the things that are on it right there, but really, all the things I just talked about, the powertrain, the handling, the ride, the comfort, the noise, all of that is kind of secondary to what is going on back there. Usually, I show you the back seat before we go on the drive. Not today. I have to show you what this thing is like back there. That is what really makes this car stand out. All right, guys, back out of the car, and I will just quickly show you that, yes, you do, in fact, get luggage space. It is right there. It's not all that much considering the size of this vehicle, but it includes this thing taking up some room, which I'll explain in just a moment. And you'll notice that you've got more than just a privacy panel here. You've got this like parcel shelf built in. When this is closed, this completely cuts off the luggage from the passenger compartment. And that actually aids in the interior being so quiet. Let's go check out that interior. Now, I usually show you the back seat from the driver's side, but you'll figure out why I'm doing it from the passenger side pretty quickly. First of all, there's our nice wide stepping place right there. We've got nice kick plate with the Maybach logo illuminated right there. And check out 
seat, rear seat right here. This is a four passenger car, but look what the rear passengers get. There's so much to show you. First of all, you get pillows and they're very lovely pillows in this nice leather. You get all kinds of storage back here and it's all nicely laid out. Here's some more of that illumination right there. You get four zone climate control right here. You got some storage right here. You have cup holders. You have champagne flute holders, and that's because you have a champagne refrigerator. Yes, this car has that option. Look at that. And you know what? Something's missing. Much better. Keep that cool right there. Do you want it chilled or very chilled? Let's go with very chilled. We've got inductive charging in the front and second rows. Of course, we've got all these seat adjustments and seat memory as well. Just like the first row, the second row has cooled and heated seats. But I am in the passenger side for a reason. Check this out. On the passenger side, you can put the front passenger seat in chauffeur mode, which pushes it far forward and the seat back straight back. And that means that I can hit this button and I'm getting leaned back. And the seat bottom is coming up right here. So all of a sudden I have international flight first class accommodations in my car. It is extremely comfortable. And this is a good time to look up and see the panoramic moonroof right here and all the glass that is surrounding me to let in a lot of natural light. And it's also a good time to say, eh, maybe I don't want to look at too much of that. And all of a sudden, the rear windows and the privacy panel of the moonroof close. And as you can see, I've got a lot less natural light in here. I'll turn on my own light. And I'm in a much quieter, much more private first class international flight cabin and i'm still not done as you can see taking a moment to pour myself this and the reason why i'm still not done is because i need a sip and i need to show you this thing right here this is a control display that gives me all kinds of access to the systems in this gls press the button right here and this lifts off. What I have here is a seven inch control panel, which gives me access to all the different systems on the GLS, which includes, of course, seat comfort. And why not get a massage while I'm here? Hot, relaxing back massage, sounds great. Get that going right now. Very, very nice. But of course, I can also control all the different seat uh, comfort settings, as well as the ambient lighting. Let's go to the other settings. We have the remote control access, settings to the car, and this is cool. We can exit this system altogether, and we just have access to the internet. Check it out. Look at that, how meta. I'm looking at my own YouTube channel while making a video about another car. So this one, it'll eventually sit right in that spot, right there. How cool is that? This screen very much reminds me of the Bentley Flying Spur and what it offers with its remote control access. But unlike the Bentley, this one is bigger and gives me access to the internet in general, giving me many more options, kind of like a tablet computer would. So this is very impressive. Also, just bluntly speaking, I have more leg room back here. I'm Robin Warner, thank you for watching. And if you are still watching, I would really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Those things really, really do help me out quite a lot. Cheers. Ugh. This is nice. Oh.